peeking behind the bars. That's Hannibal. Who's that played by four different stars? That's Hannibal. And whose face is detachable? That's Hannibal. And who's everybody's favorite cannibal? That's Hannibal. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Just kidding. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the Macaw Podcast Universe. Here we, we exist are. to prove people wrong when they say that sequels are never better than the originals. That is absolutely correct. And uh, today we are jumping into the final episode of Everybody's Favorite Cannibal. You heard the song that I performed for you, and this is it. We have gone through all of the Hannibal movies. And we are ending on Hannibal Rising, a mm. movie that is... A movie that doesn't exist. It truly does not exist. This this is a movie that we finished, and when it was over, I was like, I kind of forgot that I watched it. Yeah. Um, and everyone else. It's bad. Now yeah. you... I think this is one of the worst movies we've covered. It's Yes. And we just... I would rather watch those two pirate movies over this movie. Oh, because at yeah. least they were trying to have fun in this the other movie movies. This movie sucks so hard. Yeah. Um, I yeah. So so front loading it with that. This one you're gonna hear some rants and raves, which I've heard people actually well, really enjoy about this podcast because no raves, but a lot of rants. Oh yes, I guess you're right. Yeah. Um, but I but like the ravings of a lunatic because we're gonna go off sure. the wall here. Um. I I think you should stick around though because this is folks, this is our last podcast recorded in our apartment. So by the time this comes out, we will have moved, but we bought a house which we're very excited about, mm-hmm. and we conceived of this podcast in this apartment. We've recorded all of the episodes in this apartment, and we've done. You can you can adjust your mic. Okay. Um. <laughs> I'm glad you're doing this during this whole tearful thing that I'm trying to do. Um, yeah, pull it f- toward you. And I, you know what? I'm not going to cut this out. I'm going to keep this in the episode. And Jordan is really having a hard time. This thing is tight. It, it is tight. <laughs> it is swinging all over the place. I mean, I think it's fine. Is that the level you want it at? Oh my gosh. Huh? I'm trying to tighten it. It'll be fine. Um, <laughs> so we conceived of this podcast <laughs> in this apartment. We've recorded. We used to record it on the couch, and now we're at a table. We're at a table. I mean, we've recorded close to a hundred, if not a hundred, episodes. Mm-hmm. Almost two years in, and it's all been at this apartment. But from here on out, it is no longer going to be that. So, uh, raise your glass or or look up to the sky and and toast the apartment that we began this whole experience at um but from here on out it'll be at a home and and what i'm excited about is it will not be a place where i have to turn off the fridge every single time we record and sometimes forget that you turned it off yeah and then days later be like how come this water is like cold not cold or something like Mm -hmm. that so um anyway a shout out to the apartment and please listen to the episode even if you didn't watch the movie because it'll be fun because mm-hmm. this is oof, this is bad yeah I, I hate i hate when i don't hate it but when we're covering a series you know our whole tagline we exist to prove people wrong when they say the sequels are never better than the originals so i'm hoping that there's going to be something that is better than the original and when it's like this where the movies i'm discounting the first two but they, they just consistently go down a peg each movie. Yeah. It's like, oh man, you're you're pr- you're not proving us right. We're trying to f- vote for the sequels. We're trying to be the people that say, no, a movie can be better than a book, you know? Mm-hmm. And when it's like this, no go. It makes it tough. So, um, you want to front load anything? I mean, it was our first time watching it. No. I mean, I've seen a lot of this movie before watching it. Oh, you had? Yeah. 
I knew about the cheek thing. Remember, we were watching it, and I was like, they haven't done the cheek thing yet. Maybe I'm thinking of another movie. And then they did the cheek thing, and I was like, cool. I have seen a lot of this movie. Oh, I thought you just said that because he... I think there's been comments about cheeks in previous movies. No, no, no. I remember the decapitated head with the cheeks removed. Well, Don't re- take that away from me. <laughs> and I remember the like the person who played Hannibal, like what that person looked like. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, I, so I saw the trailer for this movie when I was a kid, you know, cause this came out when we were in seventh grade mm-hmm. and I remember being pretty disturbed by it. I did not like it. Uh, it made me feel uncomfortable. It, it really freaked me out in a lot of ways. And I thought that'll be a movie that I'll never watch. Yeah. And then, you know, finding out that Silence of the Lambs is attached to it and then being like okay maybe i'll watch Silence of the lambs but see, not ha- the other movies goes. yeah you know um but then we rented it and uh we watched it and i i still had that childhood fear where it was i thought i'm gonna see some stuff that i'm never gonna be able to forget and i really am not looking forward that to that but and you're like you're it's thinking the it's, podcast. it's gonna be a really bad gore fest and then it's not. And in the back of your mind, you're thinking, kind of wish this was a gore fest. Well, I don't wish it was a gore fest. I just wish it had anything interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's it's really boring. And the gore in it is, I mean, maybe it's pushing it for 2007, but certainly not 2021. Uh, I mean, if you are if you had those feelings, you were probably thinking it was going to be ca- like Saw caliber gore. Yeah. Saw had been coming out that's true so uh, 2000 i mean hostile probably has already been out by now probably i don't yeah. know i've never seen it but i know it was during around that time so th- i don't even think it's a product of the time in terms of gore it's just yeah they, they wanted you to feel like there was going to be but they didn't deliver on any of it which yeah the, the movie and the story wasn't even good so you're not even like man I'm really thankful i was wrong about thinking it was going to be like that for me it was just kind of like i don't know just show me show him, me him chopping off his head <laughs> just do it if you're gonna do it <laughs> well it's yeah i mean i guess if you compare this to a movie that came out in the 90s or maybe even 80s reservoir dogs uh-huh i think this movie's a lot less gory than reservoir dogs uh-huh so yep yeah so i was i ha- i am happy to report that i'm I'm actually struggling to remember what happened in the, in the movie because it's that forgettable. Yep. Now, um, let's let's get into... I, I guess I'm kind of jumping the gun here. So the movie is directed by Peter Weber, who before this, he directed The Girl with the Pearl Earring. Okay. What? Yeah. Where's the connection there? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe... I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> so... The screenplay is written by Thomas Harris, the writer of the Hannibal novels. He wrote the screenplay. Mm-hmm. Now, I folks, I love looking up notes and and commentaries and interviews and stuff like that. There is nothing on this movie besides a pretty interesting thing about the author. Well, I, I'm a, I'm leading yeah. up to it. I'm le- please. I want to say. Um, but but I I try hard. I'll look up YouTube videos. I I'll sometimes watch. I don't usually watch commentaries, but special effects if I have don't like you the think, DVD sorry. or something like that. Yeah. But and and usually Wikipedia has at least a jumping off point where I can find other articles and interviews and stuff like that. This movie has nothing. You think that means that that's part of that is like even back then, no one thought that people would be interested enough to watch it that they would do special stuff for it. Like, it's just, I think let's, the let's movie, turn this out as quick as possible and not do any of the extra stuff. I think it bombed so bad. Yeah. And it was critically and audience, like, totally rejected that I think they're like, okay, well, this isn't worth, like, investing into having, like, high-quality DVDs and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Um, so, but there is something very interesting about this movie. So, the... the I, I don't know the 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 Hannibal of the series itself, Mr. Dino De Laurentiis, the producer. So I'm gonna. Why are you calling him a Hannibal? Is he a cannibal? No, he's just kind of a villain. But we also yeah, gotta yeah, yeah. thank him. So we kind of love him, sure. but he, we kind of don't like him. <laughs> um, well, he's a guy that invested in the first movie, didn't make enough money that to, to satisfy him. Didn't invest in the second movie. Second movie, huge, massive success. Wins best picture. Wins wins so much stuff, and he has ever since then been so desperate to he wants to, to ride that the curtail coattails of that 
Yeah. Of that and has never been able to because nothing's ever been half as good. Or or I mean, I guess I don't I know about the rest of his producing career, but no, I'm as talking far about as this series, series yeah. This series. So, you know, we've talked about him a bunch. So he talks to Thomas Harris and he says, um, well, well, so Thomas Harris wrote this story, the book and the screenplay. First of all, he did it at the same time, mm-hmm. which doesn't make sense to mm-hmm. me. How do you edit that? I don't know. Doesn't that make sense to do one first and then yes. edit it and then know how to do the next one? Yes. That Ugh, does make sense. To so Thomas Harris, and remember, I think it was last week we talked about that quote where Stephen King knows Thomas Harris and he said, for Thomas Harris, for him to sit down and write a book is like excruciating torture. Uh-huh. And it's very hard for him to write books, but he's a good writer. Uh-huh. But it's it's not like Stephen King who we can assume sits down for like eight hours a day and he just dings away on his keyboard mm-hmm. and writes, you know, comes out with two novels a year. And um, they're fabulous. And they're awesome. Yeah. Um, so he wrote this story because he feared that a Lecter prequel origin story would inevitably be written without his involvement because Dino De Laurentiis said to him, and this is kind of stuff that's like off the record, but it's, this is what was said. You know what I mean? Uh, Dino De Laurentiis said, quote, I say to Thomas, if you don't do the prequel, I will do it with someone else. I don't want to lose this franchise and the audience audience wants it. He said, wrong. He said, no, I'm sorry. And I said, I will do it with somebody else. And then he said, let me think about it. I will come up with an idea. So that's like, that's like, let me think. I mean, that's like Daryl Tolkien creating uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And someone comes to him and is like, we're going to make a Gandalf story. You created him. You you birthed him with your brain. And he is yours. You are him. Uh-huh. But we're going to take him away from you. And write another story about it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's... And it's not fan fiction. It's they're going to do it for monetary gain. Yeah. So, I mean, that right there is like... The intention behind this project is not good. Yeah. And it's also like a, a prequel... Like an origin story to Hannibal. He's a murderer. Why do we want to say... I mean, okay, people... There is... There's become a huge fascination with evil people. Whether true or not true. Yeah. I understand wanting to understand like why a person is bad. Yeah. I get that. But like there has been an inordinate amount of Ted Bundy stuff within the last couple of years that is a little bit like like for example the Zach Efron movie when yeah. we've already had so many documentaries about him and it's like It's like why are we doing this? He did this? awful things. Why are we it just feels glorifying. And then yeah. also the Ratchet show about Nurse Ratchet from oh, One Flew Over brother. the Cuckoo's Nest. I We'll never watch that show because if you read the book, you watch the movie, you do not, and you are not supposed to ever sympathize with her. You are never supposed, you're supposed to hate her. She is the villain. It's not like a, yeah. I, I mean, I you read comic books more than I do, but it's not like a comic book where you're like led to understand why the villain is bad. She is yeah. just a terrible person. I don't want to know why she's bad. Same with Hannibal. He murdered and ate people and thought he was a god. Yeah. He should just, you know, he got caught. He's in prison. That should just be the end of the story. Right. So instead we get this weird, weird movie that also I can't reconcile how this movie makes any sense through the lens of there being other Hannibal movies. Yeah. There's just weird fascination with with origins that I just don't know that we always need to explore them. Like a Cruella de Vil, come on. I know. Get out of here. It's just like so people are so like we need to make another thing on this franchise because the franchise is successful what's the quickest and easiest thing we can think of well we don't really know where this person got this yeah let's do it then i guess and and yeah something like cruella it's like there's no heart behind that something actually i don't want to know why she got led to wanting to skin puppies it's like she's just bad just leave it at that and i i do understand in it that's true. And I do like him a lot. <laughs> but I mean, having said that, I, I there is something to explore with Hannibal because he is based on like he, real killers, you know, and there mm-hmm. there could be something interesting. But him being like a superhero Dark Knight Avenger character, that's not what this series has ever been. Doesn't make yeah. sense. Yeah. 
H- having said all that stuff, and and this is gonna shock the audience, but as much as I don't like Joker, there at least they were like, let's try to do something else. You have to give it to him for that. You, you have do. to give it give it to him for that. And st- that did not feel. It didn't feel money motivated in the same way that Cruella does. No, it does feel like there was an artistic vision. Yeah, it's an artistic vision that I hate, but yeah, I mean, it, it was something. But that's the beauty, th- the beauty thing about art. Yeah. So, um, so let's go back to this movie though. Uh, the music is by e- Elon Eshkery, who did Layer Cake, Kick Ass, Johnny English, Re- uh, Reborn, Reload. oh, um, Alan Partridge movie. He did okay. the music for that, yeah. Um, and Shigu, Shigu, ugh, I'm so bad at any names that aren't English. Um, Shige, Shigeru Umebayashi, who has a ton of Japanese movies. He's a Japanese composer. Okay. Um, and he also did A Single Man, which is a Tom Ford movie. Um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Sword of Destiny. What's that A was, Single Man about? Um. I don't remember. It has Colin Firth in it, but I believe it's I believe it's like a guy in the fifties who is gay, and they're hmm. tr- he's trying to navigate that. Yeah, and but I don't know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't I mean I I haven't seen it. Yeah. I don't know. The score though is really good. I've heard some of the score, and it's crazy good. Did, when did that movie come out? I think two thousand nine. I think. Oh, okay. I just completely missed that one. Yeah, I think Tom Ford's made two movies. I think. Oh, I thought Nocturnal Animals was his first one. No, he made it before that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. And if you'll remember, I and I can't believe I haven't watched this yet because it's on Netflix. But Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Sword of Destiny. It's the sequel, and it's directed by Ying or Pu Pu Ying. I can't for I, the It Man. Yeah, the Master Z guy, like the guy that we were ah, like obsessed with. Yeah. Wait. I don't think we that's haven't his watched name. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dra- Dragon recently, have we? No, I saw that when I was a kid. Okay, so when we watch the sequel, we have to watch the first one. Okay. Yeah, because I want to I've rewatch it. I've seen a lot it. of that on like growing up. But I've never seen it from beginning to end. And I remember seeing people flying around. Yeah. It was yeah. the most incredible thing I'd seen on TV. And I was like, when my dad changed the channel, I was just like, no, please turn it back. <laughs> yeah, we should make that a little weekend. Watch them both. Yeah. Um, And then cinematography is by Ben Davis, who did Layer Cake, Kick-Ass, Seven, Psychopaths. Uh, excuse me, Seven Psychopaths. And um, not the movie Seven. And uh, he did Guardians of the Galaxy, Doctor Strange, Age of Ultron. So we've actually talked about him this? quite a bit. Ben Davis, the cinematographer. Okay. Um, this movie comes out February 9th, 2007. It has a budget of $50 million. Domestically, it makes $27.6 million. Mm. Not good. And worldwide, it makes 82. Oh, so if geez. you include advertising, the movie did not make any money. Yeah. So that's... Hannibal Rising. That's it. That's all I have for notes. So what? Who? I okay. I we when we watch the show Hannibal, we need to figure out who the showrunner is. Yeah. Because I I mean I it, what am I trying to say? It's just crazy that this movie came out. Yeah. And years later they decide to also greenlight a show. Right. That's crazy because this is it just feels so beaten to death. Maybe it was long enough that they felt like it was. I mean, I'm, I haven't seen the show. I've heard it's incredible. So maybe it's a fresh and exciting take. Like, it's just as simple as well, that. I so first of all, I think the show does do its own thing. Yeah. Um, Which is cool. Like it adapts the books. It yes. doesn't like recreate. It's not them. relying on Silence of the Lambs or. That's the that's what I yeah. hear. Yeah. But it, we haven't watched it yet. But then I think for me and even having just watched them all. I'm not tired of the world. I just thought this movie was really bad. Mm -hmm. And I think critically, you know, it has like a 35 out of 100 on Metascore. And on IMDb, it's like a 5.2 or something. I think the, uh, oh, are you looking at it? Well, the Metascore is 35. Did you say that? Yeah. Okay. What's the IMDb? There is none. Oh, maybe you're. I think the app updated. Oh, and you don't. (laughs) Well, anyway. uh, 6.2. Oh, that's higher than I thought. But, but I mean, the audience didn't like it. Critics didn't like it. But they've liked the other movies. Uh-huh. Like, people do like Red yeah, Dragon. Yeah. You know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so I think it's less, you know, if if Avengers 5 comes out and people don't like it, they're not going to be like, well, no more Avengers. They're going to be like, well, that was the bad one. Now we have to make a good Def- one. Oh, you know? definitely. So, right. to me, it makes sense that they would greenlight a show. And th- did you know that they greenlit another show? Clarice, yeah. Yeah. That's which, being filmed right now. 
I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know either. But also, I mean, You'll, who I, am I feel to say? like Th- this if, is if the a, age of like. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go well, ahead. Well, just if a th- this isn't, I guess, true for everything. But I feel like when a a book about a police procedural does really well, it is inevitable that there will be a movie or a show made about it. Mm. And this one did really well a couple times, like this series yeah. and stuff. So it's like, of course, they would make a Clarice show. Of course, they would make a Hannibal show. Yeah. And they would keep making movies until they made a really bad one. I don't know. Yeah. It, like, it's not surprising to me. I yeah. This is what I'm saying. I think you're right. So uh, take it over. Okay. So Gaspard Uliol, I'm not pronouncing that correctly, plays Hannibal. Um, he is French and is in just a ton of French movies. Uh, he's in Sybil. Um, the reason I'm not really pronouncing the French movies is because I can't pronounce <laughs> okay, French okay. words. But he's also in Ordeal, Eva, Calls, Nine Fingers. He's in a lot of stuff. Okay. And then Reese Iffens plays Vladis Grutus, which is the main bad guy, and woof, woof, woof to oh him. Oh, my gosh. He was a horn dog in this movie, let me tell you. Yeah. Very gross. But not in an interesting way. It was... No. It was like he had only seen movies, oh, and he so based his performance off it. of movies. He was probably the know. worst, my least favorite. Oh, yeah. Um, he's in The Amazing Spider-Man, Notting Hill, Anonymous, yeah. Snowden. Um, he plays Luna Lovegood's dad in Harry Potter. And in Spider-Man, he's the lizard. He's Kurt Connard's the lizard. Yes. So. Um, Gong Lee plays Lady Murasaki. She is in Curse of the... Golden Flower, Memoirs of a Geisha, uh, Raise the Red Lantern, Miami Vice, the new Mulan movie. Oh. Leap. I, I actually thought she was good in the movie. The Monkey King too. But it was just a stupid part. Yeah. Like, I thought oh, her yeah. acting was really good. Yeah. I, I was impressed by her. She was in robes all the time. Yeah. So she probably was quite comfortable. <laughs> yeah. She, she was probably my favorite performance of the movie. Sure. It's just, I don't like the character or the part at all. Yeah. And I don't think it makes sense. But I'm like, hey, good for her. Yeah. She got paid. <laughs> um, Dominic West plays Inspector Popple. He is in The Wire. He is The Wire, <laughs> according to Micah. Uh, he is in Chicago, Punisher, Warzone. Oh, cool. Tomb Raider, The Affair, blah, blah, blah. By the way, but not the Tom Hooper one. One day when you're catching up on Stay of Homekins podcast, they talk about the affair for like 40 minutes. And it's one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Oh, really? Why? Because it sounds like I think the show makes like a time jump, but it's a show about an affair. Yeah, no, I I remember this show. Like, I remember seeing trailer, but I think it jumps into like the future. Like and back they, and forth or just at one point? I think like a season goes forward like 10 years and they make all these technological advances. And it's it sounds like it goes like very but haywire wait, like, and weird. So it's a show about an affair and now that it's become a sci-fi because they're like... Yeah, <laughs> they like add an element of sci-fi. That's like when Parks and Rec did the, the jump in time. Yeah. But that I feel like was all funny. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Isn't that weird that though? That is very, very <laughs> weird. Um... Richard Brake plays Enriquez Dortlich. He is in Doom 31, Kingsman, The Secret Service, The Mandalorian, and a lot Does of other Does it say TV who stuff. he is in Mandalorian? I'm you, curious. You asked this when we were watching. He plays Valen Hess. Valen Hess. Oh, that, yes. I See, I already forgot this movie that we're talking yeah. about. Kevin McKidd plays Petrus Colness. He is in Dog Soldiers, Train Spotting, Brave. And um, other stuff. <laughs> and then I think that's it. Oh, also the the guy at the beginning of Inglorious Bastards is in it for like yeah. a, one scene. The the dad of the three girls. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, um, man. So we've laid the groundwork. We've talked about Hannibal. <laughs> what other ways can we not talk about this movie? Is there anything else we can talk about? I'd love to just keep pushing it off and procrastinating. Okay, so this movie takes place, it starts with Hannibal as a child. And they want you to really know which one is Hannibal, so they say his name a heck of a lot. Even though he's the only young boy for the first 30 minutes. For the actually the whole movie. Um, There's a lot of things that they repeat, and it's like, do you, do you remember this? And I am a firm believer that flashbacks in movies should 
rarely, if ever, happen. Mm -hmm. Because unless it's like a three hour movie, it's this movie's only two hours. I mean, oh, I it felt so much longer. I remember the half hour beginning when the boring kids were getting almost eaten. Like you don't have to flash back to that. The no, the movie no, over you and don't. Over and, and the over flashbacks, again. the the duration of the flashbacks were long. I know it, it's got to just be a snapshot if you're going to do that. If you feel the need to do it, but that just means you think we're dumb and we can't remember. Yeah. Um. So he's a kid. There, it, World War II is going on. I guess he's Russian or Eastern European. It was very unclear where they were. So they live in Lithuania. Oh, okay. Um, you got that? I don't, I don't know where Lithuania is. Eastern Europe. It is. Okay, yeah. so I got that because it did have a title that said Lithuania at the beginning. Oh, that okay. I'm sure you just forgot. And yeah. then I also had to reread some of the plot because I was like, what happened oh, okay. in this stupid movie? It was just like, and, and I know a little bit is um, not quite remembering like what happened after the war yeah. in the Soviet Union being a thing and like his childhood home became an orphanage and it's like, okay, so now we're in Russia, but we're still in his home. Huh? It well, was just it, a little unclear. And, but. and to be, to be clear, uh, according to the synopsis on imdb it says in 1944 lecter is eight years old living in lecter castle constructed by his paternal ancestor hannibal the grim in the lithuanian countryside what the so, f you know they it, never said that oh. or alluded to it <laughs> oh my gosh it was just abysmal so he has a young sister misha who we also know her name a lot oh they say gosh. her name so much at the end of the movie when he zoros the guy and yeah. he goes m for misha <laughs> So, so they're um, trying to escape. They escape to like a little cabin in the woods. And mm. um, before that, Ooh, his... let's talk about cabin in the woods instead. Oh, okay. But the mom hides <laughs> something at their home that he finds years later. Blah, blah, blah. That was like, what? Why? Just, did... Whatever. I don't really care. I, so, well, yeah. So they're at the cabin. Yes. And, um, oh my gosh, I had a thought of something that I should have said, but okay. Yes. They're at the cabin. And it's also a little bit conf It is it's cut. The, the cuts are so quick and there's so much going on because around the same, sorry to cut you off, but just no, like please, a, a, please. around I'm, the I'm same excited. scene, they do kind of introduce the bad guys. And the only reason I like know that they'll remain in the movies because I recognize them from other movies. So it's like, yeah, I think they're famous enough to stick around for a while. Other than that, there was no explanation to who they were. I don't know. Were they Jewish? Were they not Jewish? I don't know. They like, well, there, there's this weird scene where the... Li I'm just going to call him the lizard, okay? Okay. So the lizard is at the... Um, of course, you know, the the Lecter Castle, who's from yeah. Hannibal the Grimm, of course. We all know. Um, and he... The Nazis walk up to him and they say, Hey, if you really want to be SS, you got to you gotta pay your dues and you should kill these Jews over here. And so he he walks up to a guy and he says, Are you, Jew are you a Jew? And the guy says, no. And then they're like, okay, let's take his pants off and see. And I just thought, what? This is the beginning What's of the movie? Like so what are we crazy? talking about? That's the guy's introduction is them saying, if you really want to BSS. And it's like, um, I, I don't <laughs> know. It's like, what is going on? Why are they like in the castle? Like, does he work for the family? They didn't even say that. It's just like there were people in the courtyard. Like yeah. randomly. It, and it I mean, no I would sense. think that it would be pretty hard to get into the Lecter castle that was given to them by Hannibal the Grimm. Hey, you got to stop doing that. <laughs> a bit over. So just, <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so unclear. It's, it's, it's weird because especially this first sequence, you know, you know, okay, they're going to show us something about Hannibal, but they're making things very convoluted, but also nothing is happening. Simultaneously. Is, nothing is happening. This, I can't this latch on to anything. is like so convoluted and also nothing happens yes it's so freaking weird yeah and and even to the point where and when you don't have things well established that's why this stuff gets confusing so they're at the house the the lectures and they walk outside and the, because this russian tank comes in and they say everybody out yeah and then a german plane flies over and shoots the russian tank and then they like all die. It's like just because the movie's set during World War II does not make does not mean that we're gonna understand everything that's going on. Yeah. It, that's how it felt like they were just like it's set in World War II. We all know what happened. 
and we do, and I know what side the Russians are on, and I know, like, I do get that. But that's not enough I, I'm not character-wise. An idiot, that's not enough for a character, especially if the bad guy is, like, in the gray area of he's just bad, he's not a Nazi, and he's not a Jewish person who's, like, trying to avoid going to a concentration camp. We do not know <laughs> who he is. And it's, and, and on top of all that, I'm still reeling trying to figure out, like, I thought Hannibal was British this whole time yeah. <laughs> because Anthony well, Hopkins. And so that, I, that's a little like, I don't really care about that. Well, it was distracting but, but to me I, because if it's distracting. That's not great. I, I'm going. So he's Eastern European. What? That's not really established ever. I, I don't know. It was I will, just, I don't think it needs to be, but okay. Okay. Maybe that's over the top, but I, I would, I, I'm just saying personally, when I was watching it, I'm like, I can't figure this part out. And then you're adding all this other, the politics. And I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. I weird. also thought that he was like, I thought it was like, oh, he's British because Anthony Hopkins played him. But in the books, I assumed he was American. Do you know how many times, I mean, that's your, I guess this makes sense why you might be fixating on it. Because when we watched Chernobyl and everyone was British, you couldn't watch the show. It, like, not that the show, <laughs> like it made the show bad. Well, I guess to you, it just, you couldn't get over that they got British actors to play Russians. For a historically, for a historically accurate, accurate show. And folks, I'm not bashing Chernobyl. And I do kind of want to watch it at some point, And I know it's good. But I was confused because the the first half of that first episode, I thought, oh, I didn't know that the British had like <laughs> c- like control of Chernobyl. I I really thought I was so confused. Yeah. Because I was like, I thought this was a Russian thing. I think it's so normal now. Like it's just it's just a thing that like I didn't even think of it. But think about any time a movie is ever set fairy tale or real in <laughs> medieval times everyone's british yeah why why is in a fairy tale world where we don't exist like americans british people whatever how come they're still british well, I, that's and interesting that is part of one of the many reasons why pan's labyrinth is so good yeah because when i first watched it it was kind of in a good way really jarring hearing this different accent and seeing this different part of history that i haven't really seen put to film and then a fairy tale element as well and there's no british people in it or yeah. english speakers yeah that was such it, it was like oh i didn't know this was something that i needed to see <laughs> this is like medication watching this movie yeah th- i didn't really think about it in that way yeah i i think at this point it's we're just used to it yeah but I'm not. <laughs> if, well, I, no, no, I, I'm talking about the medieval stuff, like the, oh, the yeah, not medieval technically, but folklore, um, fairy tale stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, shouldn't like a lot of those be German accents because of like Grim <laughs> yeah, fairy yeah, tale? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It, I, I think. Oh, that would. That's a, I, I just, right there. Someone, someone heard like <laughs> Disney or Universal or something, and you're gonna get a check in the mail because they just bought like a s- studio in Germany to make grimm's fairy tales okay that would be great that would be interesting but i think to, i guess to finish that thought is we now as americans expect that whether it's conscious or not yeah and that's like the only other accent that general audience americans can understand yeah whether like and it can it won't be subtitled yeah but it still doesn't feel quite at home right maybe and, it's just all that garbage i don't know and I, it's just studios not having faith in an audience because then you have Parasite win Best Picture. Yeah. And and be a box office hit. And it's like, okay, we're done with that now. Let's be, you know. Yeah. Okay. So, so they're at the cabin. They're at the cabin. And then this the guys who want the wannabe SS. Well. The guys come in. They've been looting the whole time. Uh, yeah. The fam- well, they come in after like the parents are dead. Right. That's when the bomb, the plane comes in and oh, shoots them. Yeah, I thought you meant the fake ss but the actual ss comes in sure or the russians i don't know they all family whole family gets killed besides the children so they're alone and starving in the cabin and then the bad guys come and like chain them up what i love and not really but what i love in movies is when they chain someone and they constantly check chains by tugging on them (laughs) yeah just tugging on them to make sure that the chains are still going to work (laughs) <laughs> and it's like i don't know it's a kid i don't know like it's just so funny i feel like that's a trope yeah. but um they the, changed- the little girl is actually excellent yeah. actually she was my favorite performance she was really good they, they gave her a lot of screen time yeah so many flashbacks Misha. so they were starving uh they got so 
starved that they're going to kill the children and eat them. Yeah. And they kill the sister. And then it says Hannibal rising. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Already I'm like, so so th- this would be probably my biggest problem with this story and this movie is so you have take a notorious serial killer. Even even someone like Jack the Ripper who we never knew who he was or anything like that. Um or Ted Bundy or name another one. I mean the Zodiac killer. The Zodiac killer. What if those people had maybe they had helped the FBI afterward and stuff like that. Or you know, that there's something interesting to them beyond just their evilness. Okay. You know, cuz you know Hannibal helps uh-huh. out in the investigations. What if someone was like, "Hey, I'm making a Ted Bundy movie, and what's really cool is you're going to find out why he's a killer." You go, "Okay." And then they make it this whole like revenge story where he's the protagonist and he's a good guy. And and by movie logic, his actions are justified. What are you talking about? I don't know. Because that's the... This movie makes Hannibal so much less demented and weird. Yeah. Because it's so, it's so weird to me that he's this psychiatrist. They don't even really show them... Like, they, it shows that... Because it's like, okay, so he's a cannibal, so when did he get his taste for human flesh? Uh-huh. And it just almost didn't even feel like they paid attention to that part of it. It was just all about the revenge. Yeah. It was. Didn't, it didn't, didn't make it. It wasn't satisfying. It, does that? I don't know. Yeah, but all. It's very. It's very weird. Um. So then it cuts to eight years later. He's a grown boy, and he is in an orphanage back in his childhood castle. Yeah, and uh, I won't tell you who owns the cast, who used to own it. But, but he's an orphan, and everyone hates him. I guess because he doesn't speak. Oh yeah, he doesn't speak except in his sleep, where he only says Misha a billion times. And we hear that's like flashback number one. Yeah, <laughs> um, and then he escapes the orphanage before, uh, not before taking the stuff that his mother hid in that like secret cupboard, mm-hmm. and it's full of like family pictures and letters, and he traverses across Eastern Europe until he gets to France and finds where his aunt and uncle live. And his uncle has uh, died. Mm-hmm. And now he just has Talk this... about a castle. This place was <laughs> awesome. So then he has this um, beautiful aunt. Uh-huh. She's a knockout. And right away... Right away you're like, oh, they're gonna bang. Yeah, but it's... It's just so weird because <laughs> it's like... <laughs> okay, we're, again... We're dealing with a serial killer. And I the only reason I keep bringing this to real life examples is because it is it is like Thomas Harris took real life examples and he tried to explore it in a way that's like this is fiction but in a way this is reality. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so okay, we have a serial killer. Now we've met his aunt and there's clearly sexual tension between them. Yeah. I don't necessarily want to see that movie, but there's an idea there and there is some weird stuff that could happen that would maybe make you go now it's starting to make sense why this guy eats people. He's got a messed up childhood. Sure. Or, uh, sure. you know, teenagehood or whatever. Um, but just right away, the movie's like, oh, you know that they're, they're, they're going to like hook up and, and like each other and stuff. And then they never do. And they never do, but then it's implied that they do. But, but it's not explored. It's just no. like, no, you get that, right? Yeah. And you just go, well, yeah, I assumed because all, the movie's been so stupid so far, I thought you'd make that stupid mistake, and you did, and then you don't even have, like, an uncomfortable scene that explores how weird that is. Yeah. That's just like, yeah, it's my aunt. We, like, kiss and stuff. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's not yeah, normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't um, know. I don't know. <laughs> so they go... She she takes him in, and he's, like, her ward now. She he's She's the only family he has left. Yeah. And... They uh, <laughs> basically, I guess, so stupid. she's like raising him. And there's the scene. I think this is before like the fish market when she's um, like she's praying to her ancestors in uh, a creepy attic room. Yeah, with is, like is kabuki she Japanese? Masks. Maybe yes, I think okay. Um, like kabuki masks are hanging around. Ooh, masks! Wow, wonder if something will happen with a mask later. And we'll, we got to save that for but the moment. There, she's praying to her ancestors and there's like samurai swords and then um, like a samurai armor. And she's talking to him about what she's doing with that and how he needs to respect everything. And like, she, you know, she's like, don't touch the swords. Like 
they're they're for respect or something like that. Respect. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't really re- like remember what is the teachable moment of that. Because well, she shows, he, she shows on, him parchment. She but... shows him ancient parchment, which I'm just thinking, you shouldn't be touching that with your greasy hands. That needs to be framed in like in a museum or just like framed in your home somewhere. Don't touch that stuff. But it shows that like samurais used to cut off heads of their enemies. Okay. So they're setting up that he needs to cut off people's heads. Yes. I guess. Well, he's a he's a very metaphorical person. So they go to the fish market, the ant gets but assaulted i gotta pause before that because they do this thing where before that they start training that happens oh, before this yeah and there's this montage now mind you this movie came out in 2007 and batman begins came out in 2005 this movie i swear to you they all watched batman begins and they were like let's do hannibal but Batman Begins, because this movie is so indebted to Batman Begins, and it learns all the wrong lessons. Same with most movies after The Dark Knight. They learn the wrong lessons. But I've never seen a movie that was such a copy of Batman Begins. Yeah. It was crazy. I felt this was the Ra's al Ghul training sequence. Yeah. And it was so weird, because it's like, wait, Hannibal? Like, the guy behind the, the... the 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 fava beans guy this is him and he's out here like sword fighting yeah, and getting know. really into asian culture or japanese culture yeah and then in the rest of the movies he wants to go to italy and stuff what do you well i think he's just a cultured person it's just weird to me i i'm saying i agree with you that i don't think they're doing any of it well yeah. but it is like a little bit I think in the movie it's like because of all of his traveling and like where he lived with his aunt and all that stuff like he and and he's very well educated he becomes a very cultured person I don't think they did it well yeah (laughs) but I think that was something they were trying to accomplish in in the movie Um, so yeah they go to the fish market the aunt gets assaulted Hannibal is beating up the guy with a meat uh, pulverizer Um, (laughs) and then they get taken to the police where we see the wire um, and he lets them off with a warning and then I guess cut to well. This is when the 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 moment, the oh, trailer okay. moment. Hannibal walks into the to the kabuki area with the samurai swords, and he grabs a mask and he puts it on his face. It looks similar to the mask in Silence of the Lambs, and he kind of is at home in this mask. Yeah. Now, Jordan, can you tell me why this makes not one lick of sense? Because. When the mask is used in Silence of the Lambs, it's to restrain him from biting anybody because he bites people. And it's not his choice to put... There's nothing in the Hannibal character that would show to us that he is into masks. No. And it's brought up in Hannibal, the movie Hannibal, but it's because someone is trying to buy that mask that was used by Hannibal. So... This is another, this is a weird prequel thing. Like, why in the world make a big deal about the mask? That would be like if there was a scene where he saw handcuffs and he was like, oh, I love handcuffs because, you know, in Silence of the Lambs, I'm in handcuffs. Yeah. It doesn't, it well, literally like, does not make any sense. You know that it's only for the purpose of they think that we want that, because but they're not even <laughs> trying to fulfill of like, he is trying to completely understand the samurai way. Like, maybe that's their dumb excuse, but I don't even think it is. I think they're just trying to show you that he's in a mask because he's Hannibal and he has to be in one. Yeah, which he's only in in one movie. Yeah. It's wild. It is What a wild decision to make. Yep. The person who created this character made that decision. (laughs) That is wild. Well, I do pity him, but... (laughs) So then... Now, frankly, I will say I thought that the rest of the movie, I thought he was going to kill everyone with a mask on, which would have... I almost wish that would have happened because the movie would have been a bigger laugh riot because it's really just a boring, bad movie. Yeah. If he was wearing a mask, I would have been busted. But, but no one would be able to see his face and see hit like he would be the last face they see. Oh, you know? yeah. Because he's in so into himself, which is true. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, so that, I, now we're at the butcher kill. Yeah. So the butcher dude that assaulted the ant is fishing. Hannibal, you know, finds him fishing and decapitates him. I mean, he slices him up a little bit and then decapitates him. Um, that's about it. Oh, he <laughs> removes the cheeks. And it's played like, how awesome is that? 
what a hero he is for killing this guy who, yes, he said something really, really bad, but it's like, that justifies him being beheaded. I gotta say, the <laughs> actor, I, I guess maybe he did a good job because it was hard to look at him when, like throughout the movie because he was so gross. Yeah. And I think that that was just his job. And maybe that just means he did a good enough job, but ooh, gross. I, I, I see what you're saying, but I will counter you with two points. Uh, Brian Cox and Anthony Hopkins. And the two points being whenever they're in the movies as Hannibal, you're like, keep showing me this guy. I love this oh, guy. I guess, yeah. I don't feel that so, way that I want more. I would say, bad on i don't know that this is the actor's fault but it's like it was hard to watch and look at him but uh, but i had fun watching the others well not fun it's like you're freaked out i don't want to watch him enjoy what he's doing which he clearly is yeah so now hannibal's like you know what i gotta go to medical school and i gotta start working but he shows he gives the head to his aunt yeah and she's pretty on a silver platter she's like no, she says that's okay. bad. Don't do that. She said that. She said that's bad. Don't do that. But yeah. then he said, I'm going to do it to the other guys who killed my sister. Yes. And she's kind of like, I guess you got to, I mean, she didn't literally say this, but it's just that air of like, I can't stop you from your destiny if you feel like that's what you need to do. And and yes, she does. The, the point I'm trying to make is she's like, yeah, no, that's bad. You shouldn't do that. Okay. Let me go tell the police that you didn't, you had nothing to do with this. No biggie. Oh yeah. She like covers it up. And she she has no she really doesn't have any reaction to uh, this head that's given to and her. And she doesn't fear him from now on. No, she kisses him. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. Um so Yeah, he goes to medical school learning about the human body. And now now <laughs> I forgot that I I looked at my note. He he uses a certain type of drug so that he can relive his memories again with the flashbacks. And then, and then when, when he's done, like taking heroin or whatever he's doing, and having these drug hallucinations from a kid, he he can then sketch the people that attacked him when he was a child. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, what do you what? what? <laughs> so the, <laughs> that's so stupid. Yeah, I don't, I'm really losing steam on this. <laughs> so, um. I did write this. You'll like this. <laughs> I wrote. I wrote this movie dares you to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. Um, and then um, my yeah, brain's shutting down. Yeah, I'm trying to. So he starts. He's like, okay, I'm gonna look for these guys and also eat them sometimes. Eat, but he never cheeks. shows us eating him. I wanted him. To, I want to see him eating people. If that's what you're trying to do. I guess that wasn't what they were trying to do. But if you're going to give me a Hannibal prequel, a Hannibal origin story, I need to see the first time he ate human meat. And they don't even show that because the big twist is he ate some of his sister. Okay, fine. Maybe don't show oh, a kid yeah. doing that. But like, it's it's like there was Which, no what big is that moment because it's so like, it's like he is a cannibal. Like he is has like this insatiable desire to eat people. And I'm seeing none of it in this movie. And it just why does he have this like mythic superhero type origin when most serial killers just have a weird relationship with their mom? Well, that's oversimplifying that. No, I'm just saying like he has this epic like on the backdrop of World War II, he's trapped with his sister and then the death of her causes him to go on a revenge killing spree, which then makes him a psychiatrist, which then makes him kill well, people. Just, they don't show him like... They don't show him like become, I don't know, full of himself. I guess maybe he always was like, he's prideful of his, of his ancestry or something, but you know, Hannibal is like, he thinks he is God. That's what yeah. he talks about a man hunter. So it's like, they don't show me or prove to me or develop him becoming that person. Yeah. So as a character, he's not interesting in this. No. So he gets the first guy. And he basically like strangles him. By that was the grossest rope. scene in the movie. I thought. Yeah, pretty gross. Because his eyes are like bulging out of his head. Yeah. So, <laughs> kills that guy. Gets info on the next guy. Um, Goes all to this the, restaurant. All the bad guys are like kind of understanding that maybe something's going down now. Yeah. So goes to this restaurant. Um, plants like a calling card to the next guy. 
or to one and, of the other guys. Yeah, and then that's when he he grabs the other guy and he's like, "Where's Rachel? Yeah. Where's Rachel?" Is this then when he drowns the other guy? Um. Yeah. Then he has the drowning scene, and it's just like, okay, that happened. Or and, let's and, move on. I mean, maybe I was stuck on the details, but I was confused at what he was spraying on the person. It didn't feel like that was established because the guy's My freaking kid. out when he's spraying. <laughs> It didn't make any sense. Yeah, but you're just fixating on it. And I know it's because you hate this movie, but as we're watching it, you're like, he wouldn't be freaking, what is what is going on? Like, why is he freaking out? And I was just like, Micah, he is literally being held up by a hook in water with other dead bodies floating and he's shooting water of him, on him. I think he's in shock. <laughs> Let's just give the guy the benefit of the doubt that he's in shock. So if he's getting sprayed with water, he can scream. Okay. I would be screaming you're too. You're right. You're right. Any other movie, the person would be screaming as well cut the guy some slack he died okay 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 so he kills them and immediately like seconds after he drowns the band uh the wire shows up and is asking him questions yeah and then this is i i wrote inspector shows up we learn what happened in the house for the seventh time yes i was being facetious with the number seven but he talks about how when you were a child you were at the house with these people and they ate misha and you're like yeah you've shown us this this is the fourth time we're going over. And this. I guess we didn't say the the wire guy is um he's like a he's a war police person, so he's like tracking down criminals from World War Two. Yeah. And he he you know, he believes that Hannibal is going to commit a crime because he has a feeling that he's going to seek enact revenge on the people who killed his sister. So he throughout the movie is kinda like keeping tabs on him. Yeah. And that's it. He does mention the works with his aunt a lot. The Nuremberg trials. And I'm like, oh, Man, I'd love to watch a movie about that instead of this movie. Yeah, tell me about it. Um, yeah, and there's ant stuff. Um, she just pops in from now and then. I mean, I just to, I guess, how you doing? Kind of stuff. There's yeah, and he's more, continuing but. to track him. He gets the restaurant guy, and then he goes after the bad guy. I mean, I don't care they about anything. They go after the bad else. guy, but I'm sure he was writing the book and the script simultaneously and forgot there was another one. <laughs> and was at the end of the book and the script at the same time and was like, oh, I guess this will be the last two minutes of him catching the last guy. Yeah, yeah. Who no one remember. I didn't, I, I couldn't remember because the movie it over was over and he killed the main bad guy. It's like, oh, is he just killing this guy now for fun? Well, but you, then he did the dog tag thing, and it's like, okay, so you just you forgot, you forgot as you were writing. <laughs> you you should have remembered though, because they did show the flashbacks three hundred times in this care. movie. I don't care. <laughs> After a while, you just stop remembering what the flashback is. Yeah, and so he kills the lizard, much to the chagrin of Spider Man. Probably, you know, the goriest part of the movie. He does slice his Achilles heels, both of them, and that's always really hard to watch. Yeah. Um, he carves his sister's letter into him like Zorro does. And he says, M for Misha. And his aunt is mortified, even though he just saved her. And he's like, I love you. And then he and starts just eating him away. like Dracula. He just leans over the body and starts feasting on him. Yeah. I, and it just feels so, I mean, I already know we're watching a movie about a cannibal. But I'm sitting there like, what? What is, what? <laughs> yeah. This movie's a huge question. But your mark. brain is like, this movie's almost over. What am I going to do after? Oh, I know. And I was excited. We made sure, I said, because I knew on this one we weren't going to like it. Sometimes you just know. We're not going to have that take where we go, actually, Hannibal's a secret masterpiece or anything like that. Hannibal Rising. But I, I'm like, there's enough time that we can watch Impractical Jokers <laughs> to get our palate cleansed yes, after this movie. and we had to. I think we watched two or three, and it was great. Yeah. And I and by the end of it, I forgot what the movie was. Yeah, me too. But then then the movie ends, um, and that's the movie Hannibal. I mean, yeah. Rising. It's horrible. Yeah. I mean, it's truly as bad as you think it is. But maybe I, we probably maybe a have not worse. skipped over a movie more. I don't know. And I frankly feel like we we did a great job. And <laughs> and I okay. think if anyone's like you should have done more detail, that's on you. That's on you, listener. <laughs> but. Before we talk about our next series and do our Hannibal ranking, I will remind you folks, please, pretty, pretty, please, give us a rating on Apple, five stars, tell us what you think about the pod, or anything, really. But Who's it helps us out. your favorite Hannibal? Yeah. <laughs> that all, we have all these comments that are just, like, really weird yeah. and scary. But seriously, please do that. Um, and then secondly, 
Go to www.patreon.com slash Micah McCaw and get your bonus episodes and exclusive music and exclusive art. Seriously, you've got to do that. You really should. It supports us and it helps us out a lot. And it is fun. We put a lot of work into it. Yes. And the more people that do it, the more we get to devote to that time. Yep. Um. So it is the month of March. It's the first week of March right now. And uh, that means that Zoolander 2 is on our Patreon and came out two days ago. Cool. And so, come on. You're telling me you don't want to hear us rant and rave about Zoolander 2? Now, Jordan, what's your ranking of the Hannibal movies? Oh, um, going from least to best, this one, Hannibal, Red Dragon, Manhunter, wait, Manhunter, Silence of the Lambs. Did I get all of them? That's all of them. Okay. Okay. Mine is Silent, uh, no. <laughs> Let me start over. Mine is- From least to great. Yeah. Hannibal Rising, Red Dragon, um, Hannibal. Hannibal, The Silence of the Lambs, Manhunter. Cool. I could see myself, though, rewatching Manhunter and Silence of the Lambs and switching those. I think they're both in their own right really, really great. Um, but Manhunter is maybe slightly up my alley a little bit more. Yeah. I think it comes down we to personal get preference. It. <laughs> um, next week, we are covering a new series. We talked about it last week. Well, yeah, but I got to tell them again in case oh. they forgot. And it is Batman. So go All rent. of them, people. We're going through the conglomerate that is Batman. Starting with Tim Burt's Tim Batman's. Burton. And then going to then, George Val Kilmer. I think it's Val Kilmer and, and then, then George. George. And then Dark Knight. After a series in between. Yes, yes, That yes. will remain unnamed. And yes. then we'll do the DCEU. And we'll have to decide. Let us know in the iTunes comments if we should count the Batman and Joker. I'm not sure. We're st- well, the, the debate's still out on that. Let us know in the comments. Okay. The iTunes Just comments. Don't watch Joker I don't either, but still. And maybe if we get enough comments. I'll... I'd rather watch Joker than this movie, I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah, easily. Um, but yeah, so it's Batman, The I think 1989. Michael Keaton, that's next week with special guests. Get on it, baby. Who's that peeking behind the bars? That's Hannibal. Who's that played by four different stars? That's Hannibal. And whose face is detachable? That's Hannibal. And who's everybody's favorite cannibal? That's Hannibal.